Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today uh, we're going to be repairing a PlayStation Portable. Um, I bought this off eBay fairly cheap uh, due to a very obvious uh, design flaw here. This uh, whole lid is uh, kind of uh, defunct, it's misshapen and it's also broken on one of the sides here. Yeah, in this corner right here. So we're gonna be replacing that um, and in order to do that you're gonna need two things um, of course you're gonna need tweezers as always uh, in particularly with this one because the screws are extremely small but you're also going to need a specialized um, Phillips screwdriver uh, this is just a very precision screwdriver it's similar to like the combination one that I tend to always use except you need something that's really long and thin in the shaft as well this this will not do uh, it's not long enough so uh, specialized Phillips screwdriver and of course in order to replace the broken cover you're also going to need a replacement cover um, you can buy these on eBay as well I think I paid like uh, five or six dollars for this one um, so it's a, a fairly inexpensive part um, especially since these tend to be breaking a lot um, so uh, knowing how to fix one of these will save you a lot of money in the long run um, especially if you you know really like your PlayStation Portable so uh, with that out of the way let's uh, start taking this apart. I'll just move that out of the way. Um, and of course we're going to start by taking off the battery. So just uh, slide the cover off and uh, replace the battery like so. And of course I'm also going to be cleaning it along the way so we'll just toss the cover into some hot soapy water and uh, yeah. uh, underneath the battery here you'll see that there are four screws, uh, they might not show up on camera, but I can already tell that someone has tried to repair this, or at least open it at some point, because it's missing the warranty sticker right here. Uh, so two of the screws, this one and this one, are obscured by that warranty seal, so you do have to take that off, um, or just pierce through it, uh, your choice. Um, Typically for these, since there's a lot of electronics on the back, I tend to not want to use any kind of heat because heat and electronics doesn't really mix and uh, you'll have a lot of sensitive stuff right behind here so you don't want this to overheat too much. Uh, you might not be able to see this screw right here but there is a tiny little black screw there. So uh, let's uh, start by taking that off. And uh, you'll also get a feel for how small these screws are, which is why you need this, because this screw is already out. So, let's see if I can get a good view of that for you. So, uh, yeah, that's the size of the screws that we're working on right now. So, keep that in mind. Uh, having tweezers, super helpful. So we'll take out the two screws on the top. And just remember that the silver screws goes toward the silver emblem and the black screws go to the side. And then of course this doesn't have the warranty seal here but uh, if it did I would have to go through that. There we go. Just make sure you don't lose those. Uh, next, we're also going to take this screw off on the side here. Just like that. That screw is a little longer than the two previous screws here. Uh, so just keep that to the side, make sure you don't lose that. And then there are two screws right here, and this is why you need this one, because they're fairly low down into the hole. So 
So you do need a very thin, small Phillips screwdriver in order to get to those two screws right there. So there's one. There's the other one. So now that we have all of those screws out, we can uh, flip it over and we can gently take off the front cover here, just like that. And then we're going to put this down for now. Um, and uh, you can also see here that this little part has broken off. Uh, typically, this is just to show you here. This is the buttons on the side here, and uh, they're kind of just you know put into those holes. But it's like a continuous long strip. So this piece right here has broken off. That should be right there. Uh, that shouldn't affect anything. It's basically just a little bit more tedious when you have to put it back together again. So we'll take these pieces and actually. I won't take that piece since it's so small, I'll just put that to the side and do some Q-tip cleaning with that. And then you can see here how the rest of it kind of comes straight out like this here. So, we'll just very very gently because it is very very thin. You can see here that it's put together with some sticky tape right there. Um, and I think I'll just clean the whole thing with a Q-tip because uh, it is so extremely flimsy. Uh, next we got the button covers here, so we'll just take those off. Just like that, throw those in the water. And then you got the actual buttons here that'll just slide out. And again we'll just toss that in the water and just throw it in my hands first. So there you go, that's the buttons. Throw those in the water. And you got the next button cover over on this side here. So again we'll just very gently lift that off and throw that in the water. And then let's do the same for the directional pad here. And then we got the battery right here. So We'll just screw that out as well. And this has two blue screws. So blue for battery. So again, we'll take those out here. And then just lift that out. And uh, you can also take this, which is the light indicator which will just lift straight up, but you have to be careful not to break it. Okay, that seems to be fairly stuck on and I don't want to, um, I don't want to force it because uh, I can clean around this, but basically that's just the thing I'm trying to lift up. Sometimes it comes out really easy, sometimes it's stuck like this. Um, if it's stuck, just leave it be, there's no point in forcing it out. Uh, but at this point, we can now take the entire faceplate and just throw that in the water. And then go back to the rest of the PCP here. Uh, PSP, I mean, sorry. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off the actual ribbon here for the buttons. And to do that we have to start over here. Let's see if I can show you that. Let me point with this. You can see right there that there's like a little pin or like a peg. And you have to lift that up. So just use your tweezers as leverage. And just very gently go in there and just peel that up Let's see 
I think I'll have to start from this side here. Yeah, because you can also see right here, there's a little split lip there, and you have to get in between those. So it's a little finicky, but there we go, got it. And then just kind of squeeze that up, just like that. And now you can see how those two pieces are separated there. So there's two kind of sides going down, and you have to take the outmost one and just peel that up. And then the other side will come naturally. Once you have that removed, or loosened I should say, you'll also see that it is connected right here with a little ribbon connector. So we'll just flip the black piece up, which will release the ribbon. So just like that, that's in its open position, and then that's its closed position. So we want to open that up just like that, and then take the ribbon and just slide it straight out. Put that to the side. Next up is the actual LSD screen itself. And just like with the uh, uh, ribbon, we have to gently lift that up. Um, this time the connectors are going to be this little slot right here. And there's another slot right there. And the third one is over on the side. And same thing here, you got a um, slot right there, here, and over there. And basically what you need to do in order to bring that up is to leverage in between, just like that. So let me see if I can show a little better here. So you go in between this plate here and the screen itself and then just push um, that way while at the same time lifting it up so it releases that hook right there. So Let's see here if we can somehow make that work. Let's see. There we go. So you can see how I just kind of bend that out. And then we'll do the same on this side right here while making sure that we don't push it down again. So just like that, and then there you go. So you can see it's released all sides. And at this point we can just lift it up and then push it this way to release the other side. Uh, it's still going to be connected, however, with the ribbon cables here. So let me just flip that over. and. Uh, show you these cables right here. There are two places where they are connected. There's an obvious one right here, and then there's a tiny one over on the side here. So let me bring that back up again. And just like with the other ribbons, uh, you have to first take this black piece right here, not the outmost border. There's a tiny little black rim right here. That's the one you flip up. So just like that, and now that is loose. And then over here, this is a little different. Um, you'll see the black piece is actually on the back end of the ribbon. So this one you flip up towards the ribbon cable, just like that. And you can see how that's in its open position. And then pop that out, and now the screen is loose. So. That's the screen right there. So of course we're going to put that to the side. And the reason why we have to do that is because we have to get into some of these screws in order to get this cover off. So you have to do all of these steps just to get the cover off. And the screws that we're going to remove are this one right here. And of course this one at the top. And the, oh, sorry, uh, just this one right here and this one here. If I remember correctly, 
those are the only two that we need to remove, but I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've done this. So let's take that out first. And then the middle screw here. And this is going to be a little longer screw than all the others because it's basically going through everything. So there we go. And I think that was it. Yeah. So it's just those two screws. So that's now loose. And uh, you've got the mechanism here. You just make sure that everything is straight and it seems like it is. You got the arm right here. So just to kind of show you how it all works, that arm right there will go into this groove. And then of course you got the sides at the angle. So it just slides down and locks in place. Um, so it's a fairly easy, you know, system. But uh, we'll uh, take the broken one, put it to the side. And actually I can compare with this just to show you, yeah, so you can see here, that's the piece that's broken off. So apart from that, it looks really good. It's just, you know, it doesn't work without that. And I can also see that the front here is broken off. So it's supposed to have a little latch there uh, for this uh, pin right here to hook onto. And this one's missing that as well. So it's actually broken in two places. Uh, but as I said, this is like $6 or so on eBay. Uh, so it's a fairly inexpensive uh, fix. Uh, you just have to do a lot of steps in order to get to it. So what I'll do at this point is uh, basically blow some compressed air throughout this entire thing here. Um, clean those uh, pieces over there and then put it all back together again. So now that everything is uh, dried up, we can start reassembly and uh, we'll start with the lid. Now you'll notice right here um, that it's got the little pins in order for it to kind of pivot on those points. And then over here it's got two pockets and those pockets are to hold these little connectors here. So in order to put it all together, we have to first align those so that they fall into these pockets here. So just like that. And then make sure that we got it all situated. So there you go. 
No, it's a little finicky. But there we go. And then make sure that we have the arm connected as well. So this part is a little tricky because you have to kind of align everything. But you should eventually get it where you need it to be. So there. And then once you've got... Get in there. Uh, once you've got that you can start by pushing down the bottom pieces here. So there you go, that's one side. And then there we go. So it's a little finicky to get it correctly, but there you go. So that is now in place. Just like that. And then uh, we're going to flip it over because now we're going to screw those screws in again. So we'll start with the long silver screw and that's going to go in the center right here. Yeah, these are really finicky. Nope. Absolutely not. Yay! Finally. So yeah, it's a little tricky, but make sure you hold the lid down so that these screws will connect. And then the other one over here. as well. Just like that. And there seems to be a little issue with this pin connecting right here. So you can see that here that it's going but it's not actually holding. Okay there we go. So what I think is that this has gotten a little kink. So gently just bend that out a little bit like that. Not too rough but just a little. There we go. So that is now holding a little better. So there you go. So that is that. Now that we got those screws in, we'll uh, start to put the uh, screen back on. Let's just put the triggers back first. So we're going to put the right one over here. So just slide that in, just like that. There we go. And then, of course, the same with the left one. So these just slide right in like that. And then we'll uh, do the screen here. So if you remember, we have to align these. So we'll flip this over again, because it's a little easier to get these ribbon cables to fit. We'll start with a big one and just slide that in. There we go. Make sure it's straight and then just close that connector down. The next one is a little bit more tricky because you can't really move the screen anymore. So you have to get it down to 
to that connector. Oh, this one's closed itself, so we'll lift that up again. Uh, there we go. And then just push that in as far as it would go. Just, there we go. Just bend down a little on the cable itself and that'll push in. Close that ribbon cable and then just align one side first and then snap the other side in place like that. Then we've got the button cover here and again we'll flip it so it's a little easier and uh, we got the ribbon cable here and we'll slide that into its connector right there There we go. Make sure that's in all the way and then just close that bridge and then align this on top and push that down so that it snaps in place. Now the next is of course to put the cover on but before we can do that we have to put all the pieces back into the cover so we'll just flip that over there and we'll start with the buttons on the bottom so we'll just align those in the holes and push that on the sticky part and you can see here that it's kind of you know coming out of the holes but that's fine everything will be squeezed into place when it's put back together again and then we'll do the final piece here and align that as well and of course we'll uh, do the battery I keep saying battery but uh, it's it's actually not it's just it looks so much like a battery so we'll uh, tuck that on in and of course this is the blue screws so screw that down there's one. And of course, the other one. And then we'll uh, start by uh, putting everything together here. So we'll do this piece and just align that. What I mean is we start with this piece to kind of align that in there and that's going to go into that direction right there. Then we're going to do the button cover. And we're going to need the straight edges to go towards the battery and towards the screen here. So we'll just slide that over. And Align it with those holes. There's the first one, there's the second one, third one, and finally the fourth one. So I'll just push that down. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So we'll take the buttons. And just like any other product, these are, uh, they can only go in one way. So that's easy enough. So we'll just push these down here. And then this one, which is here. And then we've got this one here, which is right there and then finally we have this one which goes right there so you can see here that everything goes down one way only 
and then we'll do the next button cover and just squeeze that down as well. Just like that. And bring this in and now we're going to put this down again here. And let's make sure that we don't drop the buttons here. So of course this is going to go this way where you have the buttons. And I just put a little fingerprint on the screen here. So we're going to take that off because that's going to show the right through. There we go. And then make sure that we don't do that so that we drop the one that is loose in there. So just like that and then slide it all together. Make sure, yep, the start button is still there. So we can then flip that over and just give it a gentle tap just to make sure that everything is connected. And then we'll screw this screw in here. And then finally we'll uh, take the screws all around the perimeter and screw those in. And then you have those two tiny, 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 tiny screws that we're going to put towards the silver here. So we're going to need to use our tweezers again to pop those into their holes. And then the same on the other one down here. And then finally the black screws, which are a little easier than all the other screws to put in there. battery in the battery compartment. There we go. And final piece is of course to put some uh, orange pledge on it. Now it's missing a little d-pad right here so uh, we're not gonna put too much pledge right there because it could seep right through. But we'll cover the back here. And then of course the sides, the buttons, and pretty much everything except for that little piece right there that you know could cause some problems. There you go. That's how you uh, fix the lid of uh, one of these PSPs. So, there you go. Perfect. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Um, also, if you uh, need any of the products, please use the affiliated links down below. It does really help me out a lot. Um, especially since YouTube uh, has removed my uh, monetization 
uh, on uh, my video since I don't have enough uh, subscribers. So again, um, if you like it, please subscribe. Uh, it'll help me a lot to continue to make these uh, videos in the future. Uh, again, thank you so much.